archive on our pages again tonight. So leave any questions you have about the war between Israel and Hamas down below, and I'll be sure to answer all of them tonight. So hopefully I've just shown you some sort of random montage of IDF TikTok because that's a thing and yes we have known it's been a thing for a while. I made a video when they started doing this back in I think 2021 although the account has been live since 2020 and it's just the most bizarre thing to watch like considering what is Israel are doing right now and then watching these TikToks as their propaganda like Happy TikToks, loads of stupid dances, loads of interviews of soldiers and pilots. It obviously serves a very sinister agenda because it's trying to make you support what Israel's doing right now to Gaza. And what I wanted to do today is just like look at it and just talk about who this is aimed at and why I don't think it's working. Because as you're probably getting the sense of from my videos, like we talked about woke washing in terms of focusing on Israel's LGBT community and stuff like that, right? They're trying to appeal to young people, young Westerners in particular, and they want you to be like, Israel is just like you. And it's no coincidence, most of the people you see in these videos are white Westerners, because they're not only white, a lot of them also have American, French, South African accents, right? But So they're very much trying to sell you on, Israel is Western, Israel is secular, Israel is good, young and progressive, Look at our multicultural armed forces, but where, yes, young women drive tanks and serve in the armed forces. Don't you support that, you woke liberals? You love diversity. You love diversity and inclusion in the CIA. Like, we remember that propaganda campaign recently about, like, woke CIA agents or army propaganda about soldiers who have two mums. And yes, that does appeal to the liberal mind. Liberals think, like, if a woman was president, nothing bad would happen. Liberals think, if only more cops were women, then the world would be a better place. Not realising that, yes, women in patriarchy can still serve patriarchy, even if it's against their own interests. It's not that, you know, we've clearly seen evidence of that with Margaret Thatcher, Hillary Clinton, loads of female politicians or female soldiers. Like, it doesn't really matter that they're women, that that doesn't necessarily make them more woke because they're still serving the same system. Uh, so I just wanted to look at some of these today. First, we're going to look at the general IDF TikTok, and then we're going to look at the stuff to do with women specifically. And then I just want to tie it back to IDF cat girls from a couple of years ago. And also maybe even talk about, if we have time, uh, Rhodesia also using women in its propaganda and using women in their own military as well so all of that coming up for you today please like the video also follow me on social media so i don't use tiktok but i do post some short videos on my instagram page so go follow that at the cavernack of everything and consider becoming a patron get access to the discord server that is the only discord there is there is no public one and also get access to my switch friend code and just other stuff on the patreon page itself and also check out everything in the description including my subreddit. So yes, let's talk about IDF TikTok. It is obviously like insanely dystopian. We're watching one of the most immoral and cowardly militaries in the world right now. Literally just destroying a whole territory, mostly of civilians, to try and get the insurgents there, right? And in my opinion, that is not actually why they're doing that. They're doing it because they want to ethnically cleanse Gaza and make it a part of Israel. So many Israeli politicians, members of Netanyahu's party, members of the government have all said that, right? So I actually believe they're just using this as justification to take over Gaza and West Bank will be next. But also, while we're reading all the reports of these terrible atrocities done uh, by Israel's army, the IDF, and also the Air Force and the other branches of the military, we also get lovely woke TikToks as well. Because like I said, they have one target in mind, and that is young Westerners. Because as we all know, Gen X, baby boomers, they love Israel in the West, right? White people in America, whether Jewish or Christian, who are of a certain age, most of them support Israel. But young people 
are generally more pro-Palestine. And they know this, and they know they're losing the propaganda war because, first of all, Palestinian propaganda is actually made far better because probably most of them are actually teenagers. And I believe IDF propaganda is probably directed by like a 35-year-old liberal. And that's probably why it's so cringe-inducing and bad. And that's also why no one like my age is going to believe this is the reality of the IDF or believed in this like literal whitewashed woke version of his propaganda. The latest thing they uploaded is crazy to me, right? They're literally bragging about doing another Nakba. They're saying, see for yourself how thousands of Gazans have been evacuated. Yeah, but the IDF, you're telling them to leave. And even people in your government have said, they don't expect them to come back. They don't want them to come back. They want them to go to the Sinai Desert. They want them to go to Egypt because they think Gaza is for them. And in the comments, you get loads of garbage, one of the newer ones, but I think that's because as you see here, the engagement is quite low because most of these posts actually do get loads of criticism. But yeah, that's the most recent one. Just bragging about this stuff for all the world to see. It's not even subtle. It makes you wonder if TikTok was around in World War II, what the Axis would be posting on um, social media and TikTok. And then you have this one, which I do love this one because I think it also outlines the absurdity of the state of Israel in the first place and the ideology behind it. Basically, it shows a bunch of IDF soldiers, all from different backgrounds, speaking in different languages. Um, so just have a look at this quick. Hello, Ariel. My name is Daco. I'm Gabriel. I'm Ariel. I'm Ben. Ben. I'm Nair. I'm 21 years old. I'm Ben Estrin Bachat. I'm 19 years old. I'm 20 years old. I'm 22 years old. I'm a soldier. 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 So yeah, showing you there that loads of people in the IDF actually speak different languages because they come from different countries and they don't come from Palestine and they have no links to Palestine. But because of how the Israeli state is created, you don't even have to be from a Jewish ethnicity to go there, let alone one that has a connection to Palestine. So yeah, all these people speaking second languages should point to the absurdity of the state of Israel that people like this can go there and steal a Palestinian home from a family that have lived there for generations and fight for a state that is literally just taking over the whole territory right now to try and make it all parts of Israel while they're all speaking different languages. Although you do have two people speaking Arabic there, you will notice how most of the people there are speaking European languages because this is also targeted at Europeans. Like notice that there isn't an Ethiopian IDF soldier there, despite the fact that Ethiopian Jews do serve in the IDF, and also notice how you rarely ever see them in these propaganda videos. And most of the people you see in these propaganda videos are usually white and they're speaking with a European accent or most times actually speaking with an American accent, right? Because they know what their target audience is. They know they're trying to appeal to Americans primarily, but also people in Europe. So that's why you get this propaganda. Show all the IDF soldiers speaking their probable native language because they've come to Israel from these other countries, right? And what they're trying to tap into with liberals is like, look at the lovely diversity. Israel is a diverse utopia of Jews from throughout the world, right? But of course you have to have this liberal mindset to actually think that's a good thing rather than, oh, so the state of Israel actually doesn't have much ties to Palestine or even Jewish groups from Palestine. It's primarily focused on Europeans. And I find this really dystopian considering everything we're seeing right now to do with the Israeli Air Force. Th these are posted during the war, by the way, a lot of this stuff. So check this out. This is insane to me, right? What these people are doing right now compared to the image that IDF are portraying of these people is just like the most dystopian stuff I've seen in a while.
So thank you there, pilots, for having these fun videos about you answering our questions. My one question would be, how many bombs have you dropped on Gaza recently? But it seems like you haven't answered that. But yeah, again, so dystopian that these people, these young men, are doing all the terrible stuff we see now. And the IDF propaganda is trying to appeal to the liberal mind, the liberal sensibility of, oh, young progressive people in the IDF, how amazing is that? Here you have another video of an IDF soldier explaining to us all about the IDF. Hi, I'm Gal, and today I'm going to answer some of the most common questions about the IDF. When and why was the IDF established? The IDF was established on May 26, 1948, in order to defend the newly established state and its civilians. What are the three IDF armed forces? The three IDF armed forces are the ground force, air force, and navy. What are the main tanks that the IDF uses? The IDF's main tanks include the Merkava tanks, which are known for their advanced features, firepower, crew protection, and mobility. Who was the first IDF Chief of Staff? The first IDF Chief of Staff was Lieutenant General Yakov Dori, who played a crucial role in developing and organizing the IDF from 1948 to 1949. Tell us in the comments below which other IDF topics would you like to hear about? What other IDF topics would you like to know about? Did you like that lo-fi track, by the way? Very down with the kids, these IDF soldiers. And of course, again, front and center, like another white soldier as well. So yeah. How dystopian is that? Like, what's your other comments on the IDF? I could think of a hundred things I'd want you to address, IDF um, TikTok man. The contrast of this with the reality of the IDF is always just, to me, just pretty sickening, to be honest. Like, the fact that they serve in this military gleefully and make stupid TikToks. And don't worry, it's actually going to get worse because we're going to see lovely uh, TikTok dances by IDF soldiers soon. But then you just have more heartwarming stuff about the soldiers who serve in different regions you know, best friends, don't we all love that? <laughs> so that's just to give you like a little general overview of, um, you know, IDF TikTok, which like I've been saying throughout this war, the IDF propaganda primarily focuses on liberals. Because do you think conservatives like a lot of this stuff? Especially what we're gonna see soon with all the women, seeing women in the military as equals, as Israel constantly sells us, they probably don't like that much. Again, like I said, it's meant to be seen as young, Western, fairly progressive, fun, laid back. Not that they're in like literally a terrible apartheid military or anything like that. But like I said at the start, a couple of years ago, we had these viral TikToks of IDF cat girls. Now these people weren't on the official IDF page, but apparently people were saying that if the IDF had a problem with this, they'd obviously stop it, but they like it because a lot of these IDF first trap girls were getting lots of views. Um, so just going to talk about that a tiny bit. So these are some articles back from when this happened. So Rolling Stone, why are events for soldiers posting first traps on TikTok? And yeah, I probably put on screen some of them for you today. I showed them a couple weeks ago, but the article just saying, um, in using social media as a propaganda tool, the IDF is not particularly unique. As most countries' militaries have established social media presences, it's the kind of thing a public can always find when a war comes under scrutiny, says Roger Stahl, a professor at the University of Georgia and author of, of Militainment Inc., War Media and Popular Culture. But Israel is unique in terms of both its military's strong focus on social media and its mandatory service, meaning conscripts between 18 and 21, they're all, who are all young and well-versed in social media. Israel is such a militaristic society, so there's a broader support for that kind of media. When the US, things like soldiers dancing don't go viral in the same way, it says Sophia Goodfriend. The IDF's TikTok account launched in 2020, garnering quickly 90,000 followers. And another article by Al Jazeera around the same time, talking about this a bit more. Featuring female soldiers is a way to diversify your lethal forces, not just women, but also people of colour and kind of putting pluralism into these violent organisations says Yao Berda, an assistant professor of sociology and anthropology at Hebrew University of Jerusalem. According to Berda, the social media strategy also draws parallels with the Israeli state's pinkwashing efforts. Israel has been criticized for using the state's vibrant gay scene as a guise of progressiveness and a way to deviate from accusations of violating Palestinian human rights. The Israeli army's strategy on feminism also seems to backfire because of inconsistency, while the profile celebrates its female troops, it can also construct content with what can be seen as misogynistic sense of humor. Using the trend hashtag supermodel and the caption, we're serving looks since 1948, TikTok users see the camera pan over an Israeli tank while listening to a voice recite 
And I'm telling you, Bob, with a body like that and a face like that and legs like hers, she's going to be a Victoria's Secret supermodel. The author adds that the Israeli army social media believes a solution is to improve its messages, images and infographics, more dancing soldiers that humanize the military's face. The Israeli forces refuse to consider this as a broader political problem, and that's why they are living in a profound crisis, one that not even the best militainment can solve. I kind of echo the sentiments there of, I don't think Israel are winning the propaganda war with young people, and that's the target. But anyway, on the note of them trying to target young people, women factors into this, and whether that's objectifying women, like that article said, or it's just trying to make these relatable TikToks to young people I think it's failing pretty miserably because everyone can see the contrast between what Israel are doing and these TikToks and young people younger than 35 can all just see this is stupid, right? Like no one is buying this. And the one thing I will say, a lot of this uses licensed music, so I'll be playing probably some like KK Slider, Animal Crossing over it. Don't worry, they're not using your favorite KK Slider songs. Uh, but let's just have a look at uh, I Am Blakely reacting to some of these because this is where I found a couple of them before looking at some that I've downloaded myself, which focus a bit more on like talking and stuff. They didn't jump in on that girl math trend. That is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Like, oh yeah, if Israel destroys a school, they're the bad guy because they're trying to get like one Hamas insurgent. So they destroyed the whole school. You're calling them the bad guy. That's Hamas math. Have you guys ever looked at the IDF social media? What am I watching? Okay, but it gets worse. Are the tax dollars going to not just like insane amount of weapons, but also like their marketing budget? This is some of the most bizarre shit I've ever seen. Is this supposed to be for recruiting or just to get Americans to think they're like hip and relatable? I know you've all heard about girl math, but how about Hamas math? If Hamas places a rocket launcher next to a kindergarten and the IDF neutralizes it, then the IDF targets schools. If Israel defends itself, then Israel is the bad guy. This is Hamas math. Does any of it add up to you? Jumping on that girl math trend, that is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Like, oh yeah, if Israel destroys a school, they're the bad guy? because they're trying to get like one Hamas insurgent, so they destroyed a whole school. You're calling them the bad guy. That's Hamas math. This was recent, by the way. Someone telling me to join a live stream from the IDF TikTok account what, while they're doing what they're doing right now. So look at this. Hi everyone, Lieutenant Tammy here. I'll be going live on our pages again tonight. So leave any questions you have about the war between Israel and Hamas down below, and I'll be sure to answer all of them tonight. See ya. I honestly don't know who's mixed that because I can barely hear what she's saying. But yeah, join the live stream if you've got any questions about the war we're conducting right now, not trying to get rid of every single Palestinian from Gaza. Again, people speaking in English. You have another one of these TikToks. Also, everything they say here could be applied to what Israel have historically done to Palestinians and what they're doing right now. Let's play a game. Put a finger down if you've had rockets launched at your home. Put a finger down if your social media is flooded with obituaries. Put a finger down if you've texted your friends terrified that it's the last message they'll see. Put a finger down if someone you know is missing, kidnapped. Put a finger down if you haven't been the same since October 7th and probably never will be. I and 9 million other Israelis have just put all five fingers down. So like I said, someone else, I think that's an American accent right there, designed to appeal to Americans, again, using women as a spokespeople on these TikToks. And what is actually just insane to me, and I've been constantly saying that, um, the IDF should refuse their orders and most people shouldn't accept the draft of the IDF because you know, you're an Israeli citizen, you live in an alleged democracy, you can vote for people, you can vote people out who support terrible stuff like this, and you can also not serve. Plenty of Israelis do it, more should do it. And everything she's saying there is what Palestinians go through as well, right? So what that should make them realize is, oh, what happened on October 7th was terrible. But also everything I've just done my little finger thing for, uh, Palestinians could do that as well, pretty much for everything I've said. And more of them could do it as well than Israelis, especially in Gaza. So maybe you should realize that these people are suffering at your hands too, and you should both realize that you killing each other 
for the Israeli government's agenda is a bad thing and won't make you more safe. But again, brainwashing, this stupid propaganda, it's not really going to change anything. But I find it curious that they're saying all this stuff without realizing that nearly every Palestinian could do this in Gaza as well. So now let's get to basically the girl bossification of serving in an apartheid military. I do like these ones. Uh, it's basically TikToks about women serving in the IDF and how great it is, so let's have a look at some. For me, serving in the IDF isn't just about duty, it's an honor. It is a place where I found a sense of purpose, where I formed deep bonds, where I overcame great challenges. I put on my uniform every day, ready to defend Israel and its people. Throughout the years, our country has made great leaps and reached major milestones. From defending our country in operations and wars, to Alice Miller's leaps to give women equal opportunity in the IDF. Like, do you think that convinces anyone to like join the IDF or support the IDF? Just focusing on these women like, yeah, you can join the IDF as a woman and you can drive a tank or do this other stuff. IDF women, isn't that great? Or you can talk about how there's equal opportunities for everyone. Or you can do TikTok dances. <laughs> Because that's what everyone loves and everyone believes actually you're very moral because you're so relatable. Again, I think the idea of social media strategy just fails on every level at its target audience. Because yeah, sure, maybe libs are convinced about this. Maybe some 35 year old liberal person is convinced. I don't think anyone else is convinced. No one my age is convinced by any of this that it makes what the IDF are doing okay, doesn't make you believe the propaganda. And it's just so funny how there's probably so much money put into this, but the Palestinian propaganda is like better edited, is like using memes and stuff now. Like it's insane where this is literally like it was designed by a 35 year old careerist staffer for a centrist Democrat politician. Like that's the vibe I'm getting here. It's what they think young people will like, but they don't like, and they see right through it because it's so, so cringeworthy. But like I said, using women in propaganda for apartheid states is not new to Israel at all. They used it for a long, long time. And like I said, you don't see any Ethiopian Jews in any of these videos ever. You hardly even see Palestinian Jews in this as well. You hardly ever see Arab Jews either. It's mainly just white Jews all the time with European accents. Because again, they know they're appealing to racist liberals in the West. But um, I've seen this going viral a lot recently because Rhodesia was an apartheid state as well. Obviously a bit different to Israel in that it was a black majority ruled by a white minority like apartheid South Africa. But um, just a little article and I'll show you some uh, screenshots on screen. So uh, by 1975, with the growing communist insurgency, the Rhodesian army was overstretched and was soon reaching critically low levels of manpower. In addition to a revolutionary wave of homemade armor fighting vehicles being rolled out, an experimental recruitment drive was put in place to recruit Rhodesian women into the military, and thus the Rhodesian Women's Service was formed. In the first few hours following the announcement of the project, over 1,200 applications and the first training courses were quickly full. Eligible women were aged between 17 and 50. In order to allow the able-bodied men to head to the front line, it was initially decided that women would fill admin roles in the military. Interestingly, the RWS lacked any rank structure, and serving members were all addressed as Miss or Mrs. Whilst the pay was less than that of male soldiers, the women were paid a similar wage to the police. So just linking it to Israel, the members of the RWS were trained in the highly effective tried and tested style of the women of the Israeli Defense Force. It was an extremely intensive course that packed in relentless training in a period of two weeks. 
Its main focus was on military drill, weapons training, counterterrorism, and urban warfare. Many of the older male soldiers were highly skeptical of female units in the army. However, due to their commitment and high levels of training, they soon proved they took their newly appointed position very seriously. As the unit overran its experimental period, it was soon reassessed and the women of the RWS were assigned across various areas of the Rhodesian military. Before long, many of the women were undertaking vital duties on the front lines of the Rhodesian Bush War, such as landmine tracking, signals and intelligence, and before long, it was gaining attention from the Rhodesian government. In 1977, in recognition of their development, the government introduced a rank structure, the salary was increased, and further military training was offered by women to enhance their careers. So like I said, I showed you the propaganda, and it is funny that apartheid states seem to always stick together, you know, Israel's relationship with Rhodesia and in particular apartheid South Africa is very telling and also how they follow the training program similar to women in the IDF. And also interesting there, like that seemed like how women used to serve in the IDF because women haven't always been allowed in combat roles in the IDF and still mostly don't do combat roles. There are obviously women's units that do fight and there are women that see combat as well. But it's not as much as you think it is. Like, again, with a lot of Israeli propaganda, it's a massive exaggeration of the truth. So if you believe a lot of these myths about the diverse military of the IDF, then you believe that probably women make up like 40% of combat roles or something. But they don't, right? Same with Rhodesia, where they didn't really fight despite serving in the military. And the same with Israel's pinkwashing, where they act like it's a bastion of uh, LGBT rights, despite the fact that it has worse LGBT rights than like most of Europe, right? So again, this is the Israeli propaganda that they're pushing out. And like I said, I don't think it works. Well, the problem being is that whether this propaganda is effective or not, which I'm saying it's not, it doesn't matter. Because at the moment, our current leadership loves the Israeli government because it's part of the ruling elite of the world. It's part of the Western domination of geopolitics and the Middle East, and they serve as a key economy for certain things like military tech and stuff, and that's what they primarily exported around the world. Anyway, that is it for the video. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments, and if you made it this far, thank you for watching.